Hello friends, welcome back to the new lecture on the transmission system topic. In this particular lecture, we are going to discuss about a synchromesh gearbox. This is one type of a gearbox. Already we have discussed about a constant mesh gearbox and sliding mesh gearbox. And this is third and very famous type of the gearbox that we are going to discuss. The whatever the disadvantage of previous gearbox was there that will be overcome in synchromesh gear gearbox this particular gearbox will be looking a very complicated one but at the time of working it will be very smooth and it will be transferring a gear very easily in this particular gearbox you will see that the shifting of gear is very easy this particular gear box is most widely used in many type of the cars buses trucks etc for smooth transferring of the power in this particular case <coughs> here the clutch shaft is not shown actually and uh, this is our output shaft you have to assume that the here the clutch shaft is present the clutch gear is present and from clutch gear the power is transmitted to the lay shaft and the gear which is present on the lay shaft it will be rotating now the u1 u2 u3 u4 these are four gears which are mounted on a lay shaft and they are firmly mounted on that means there is no relative motion allowed between u1 u2 u3 u4 and the shaft once gear will rotate shaft will also rotate or if shaft rotated gear will also rotate whereas the gear mounted on the main shaft they are of different shapes actually this is uh, name has b gear b gear c gear d and gear e these are four gears present these all four gears are mounted on a main shaft by using a bearing so here whatever black color you are finding these are bearings then this particular gear are of a different shape if you observe very carefully here in this particular if you observe to the this gear b in the gear b here we are having a gear tooth and here also we are having gear tooth after that there is another small tooth which are present given name as a k1 so this is gear k1 and here we are having a taper surface m2 so these are different name the gear name is b k1 is the gear tooth and m2 is the taper surface so the our gear is made up of a casting and which will have a total surface as like this and it will be having a gear k1 and surface taper surface as a m2 this particular gear has designed in such a way that there will be synchronizing of the speed now we are going to see when we are going to observe working how speed gets synchronized that will see electron currently remember that this gear this gear is mounted on a bearing and hence even though gear is rotating shaft will not be rotating another particular device that is what called a synchromesh device this is actually a synchromesh device now synchromesh device will have a taper surface m1 on this side and en1 on this side on this synchromesh device we are having another internal gear g1 so this is actually internal gear we are looking at side view and in the side view we will not follow, we will not see the circular shape but but we can see the cross sectional view like this and this g1 internal gear is in mesh with the external gear provided on the synchromesh device so here there will be external gear and that external gear will be in a mesh with internal gear of g1 they will be mesh with each other and this particular synchromesh device is internally splined here internal spline are present and this internal spline are in mesh with external splines of the main shaft so this main shaft has a external spline on this particular part at the same time this particular part it will have external spline and that external spline will be in a mesh with the internal splines of the of the the synchromesh device this device is actually modification over uh, constant mesh gearbox in the constant mesh gearbox we were finding a dock clutch but in this particular gearbox we will finding a synchromesh device this is what a synchromesh device so such kind of two synchromesh device we have shown this is a f1 and here another synchromesh device is also present okay so these are these two are identical with each other now generally what happen here there will be input shaft on the input shaft clutch gear will be present from clutch gear power will come to this one and lay shaft will be continuously rotated as lay shaft is continuously rotating gear u1 u2 u3 u4 also continuously rotating even though you are in a neutral position if u1 u2 u3 and u4 are rotating the gear which are in mesh with that like 
with u1 big gear is in mesh with u2 c gear is in mesh u3 d and u4 first of all u5 and then it will go to the e as this gear b c d e they are in mesh continuously with this one this b c d e also will be continuously rotating now you have to observe that the diameter of these all gears are a different one this is bigger diameter then it is smaller smaller and smaller because of this different diameter the all four gears b c d e will be rotating at a different speed according to gear ratio so we may have very less speed to the d then slightly higher c and again slightly higher b so this particular gearbox may have a number of gears there may be 3 4 5 but only extracted part of that is shown in this particular only in this particular gearbox i can observe the three forward and one reverse gear position in this particular case let us see how the smooth transfer of gear will be occurring in this case you will find that the gear shifting lever will be connected to this s1 gear shifting lever will be connected to s1 and when we move gear shifting lever the g1 and the synchromesh device will also move left and right accordingly motion lever. now let's assume that we are going for a first gear for the first gear position i am going to use gear d in this particular gear d when we go for a different gear let's go for a first gear when we go for a first gear what i have to do is i have to move this synchromesh device towards left side on this side and when we shift particular lever to move on a left side first of all this total device will move towards left side and the taper surface p1 and p2 will be mesh with each other now let's see and zoom view of this one this taper surface p1 and p2 will come in contact with each other so p2 will be rotating with a speed because it is in engage with u3 and as it is in engage with u3 the d gear will be rotating and the speed of d gear and this taper surface will be same as this is one casted part now p2 will be moving with some speed and with that p1 will come in contact so speed of p2 will be given to the p1 hence the synchromesh device will start rotating after this uh, speed is synchronized with this particular device then the internal gear g2 will be moving on left side that means the internal gear g2 will move on the gear k2 so now the k2 is engaged with the g2 so power will be transferred from k2 to g2 g2 to synchromesh device from synchromesh device to main shaft and from main shaft it will be coming out so what we have done is initially we have synchronized the speed of a p2 p1 so we have increase the speed initially this particular synchromesh device will be stationary and when they will be in mesh with each other or rather p1 and p2 comes in a contact with each other the speed of up p1 will increase after increasing speed we are going to move g2 on the k2 because of this what will happen the smooth movement of the gear will occur if this is completely stationary and g2 move over k2 then there is a chances of creating sound vibration and there is also chances of breaking the tooth so in order to avoid that what we are going to do first of all we are going to match the speed of p1 and p2 and ultimately synchromesh device and gear and then we are going to move actual device and hence the power will be transmitted to this one so in this case the power transmission line it will come from a clutch and it will be moving like this it will be going like this one after that it will go to the k2 from k2 it will go to the g2 and from g2 it will go out so like this power transmission will be there in the first gear similarly for the second gear what we can do for the second gear this particular synchromesh device i can move towards right side direction after moving up towards right side direction the n1 and n2 they will be coming in a contact with each other after n1 and n2 comes in a contact with each other the speed of this n2 will be given to the n1 and n1 will be start rotating and then g1 will move toward the l1 and then the power will be transmitted from c to g1 g1 to synchromesh device and from synchromesh device it will go out similarly now we have discussed about this is second gear for the third gear what i have to do this particular synchromesh device i have to move towards left side so that the m1 and m2 they will be in mesh with each other so when these two mesh with each other the speed of m2 will be given to m1 and as the speed of m2 will be given to 
M1, the speed of M1 will go on increase, then G1 will be moving towards left side direction and then power will be transmitted. So you can remember that this is a first gear position. For second gear, I had to use this one and this is what third gear position. So three forward gear we have seen it. For the reverse gear, what we are going to use? We are going to use this gear U5. In the in this particular gear, the whatever rotation of this, we have got a normal shaft, opposite rotation will get here. So if the clutch gear is rotating clockwise, this lay shaft will be rotating anti-clockwise and all U1, U2, U3, U4 will be rotating anti-clockwise and hence there will be clockwise movement of this uh, BCDE and clockwise movement of main shaft, so we will get a clockwise here. But when synchromesh device comes to the reverse gear position means this has moved towards right side direction at that time what happened the speed of clutch gear is a clockwise then the lay shaft is anti-clockwise from anti-clockwise rotation of u4 we will get a clockwise rotation of u5 and clockwise rotation of u5 will give you anti-clockwise rotation to the this particular gear e and anti-clockwise rotation will be given to the synchromesh device and from synchromesh device we will get a main shaft also rotating with anti-clockwise rotation likewise we can get anti-clockwise movement and hence we can have the opposite rotation of the speed so how power will be transmitted in reverse gear let's see it will be moving like this and from this it will go to the synchromesh device and from synchromesh device it will go out and this will be moving with reverse rotation that is what anti-clockwise rotation so one of the very good advantage we will get here is there is no clashing of the gear there is no breakage of the gear at the same time vibration etc will be less and we will get very smooth running of this particular gear this gear is widely used for many cars etc because of its smooth operation this is all about synchromesh gearbox thank you very much